We've had a lot of natural disasters lately. Tornadoes in Alabama and Tennessee, and the flooding in Mississippi and in New Orleans. But we also sometimes have disasters in our own world, where our intentions do not manifest, where our greatest dreams fall apart, shatter, get destroyed by negative thoughts and feelings. So we want to understand how to prevent that from happening. The idea is the quantum shield. So let me tell you a story. There was a young man in Tennessee who received a telephone call from a neighbor. And the neighbor said, get out of the house, there's a tornado coming, it's going to rip your house apart. So he did. He left, left with his 12-year-old son and went out under a tree. So he went out and sheltered under the tree with his son, about 12 years old. And the debris was flying all over the place as the tornado hit. It ripped apart his house. And the tree sheltered him and his son from that debris and saved their lives. So, the question is, what would have happened if he would have not listened to his neighbor, but rather listened to his inside voice, which might be telling him something like, ah, it's not that bad, you're going to get through it, you're strong, you're a man, let's shelter in place. So, what happens is that Sometimes our thoughts inside or even thoughts outside can entangle with the right choices and collapse them so that we don't make the right choices. Let's see how that works. So my book is called The Quantum Shield Protecting your life from destructive thoughts and feelings. Not just from within yourself, as in the case of the man in Tennessee, but also thoughts coming from outside. So what we want to do is first understand what this idea of the quantum shield is about. The word quantum means bundle. And specifically, it applies in physics to the small bundles of matter that we, we say exist, that make up our bodies and the earth, etc. Okay? And they have a strange behavior. They behave in accordance with probability, like the rolling of the dice. And so, what has been proposed is that this rolling of the dice actually can be interfered with by the entanglement of outside forces. So we're looking at an analogy in this book to uh, the entanglement in quantum theory, to the entanglement of our thoughts with other thoughts and how they influence them. So first let me ask you, have you ever had a disaster in your life, right? Some dream that just fell apart because of thoughts you've had or thoughts others have had that have influenced you. Think about it a minute. Once you have that in mind, try to think about what the thought or feeling was that caused the collapse of that dream thought. And then we want to try to understand what you could have done to save that dream. <laughs> we all have dreams and things go awry. So if the analogy works, what kind of entanglement collapses your path to the dream? I've already indicated that it's two different possibilities. Let's look into those. It comes from within or without. Entanglement with your subconscious and the thoughts and feelings that boil up from it, right? Uh, Wayne Dyer calls it the habitual mind because we have habits of thinking that we reinforce that are negative. If we don't remove those habits and change them, 
then that may entangle with our dream and prevent it from realizing. Secondly, we want to watch out for the entanglement of our thoughts and feelings with the thoughts and feelings of others. Not just individuals in our family and that we run into, but in the mass consciousness, on TV, on radio, wherever. Our communications on the internet can entangle our mind and remove the possibility of achieving our dream. So let's look into that habitual mind. <laughs> Think of a negative thought or feeling that keeps popping up. Well, I tell you, right before we started this video, I was thinking, my mind is hazy, how can I do this video? So, one of the uh, things that I actually would like you to try sometime is to write down the negative habitual thought or feeling that comes up, like hazy, <laughs> I've got it on a little label, I'm putting it on my forebrain here, okay? Now that sounds negative. But, watch what I do. Okay, I take that label of the negative thought or feeling and I rip it off and cast it away in exploding light. Okay? But now, to replace it, I visualize in white light across my brain, focused instead of hazy, the positive opposite of that habitual thought. And, you know, that really works. It's so powerful. When I discovered that, I thought, wow, <laughs> I've been given a blessing, you know, <laughs> that I should share with others. This actual, you can do it in your mind, too. Just pull the negative label off of your forebrain. The forebrain is what really programs us. It uh, enables us to set the programming. And so you can reset it with that positive, bright image of light of that positive word, like focused. Okay. So, peel off the negative labels, replace them with positive ones. Right. And you notice a bunch of different labels on this lady's forehead. That's really what stimulated me. I saw this picture and <laughs> thought of the label analogy. One of the really, really powerful things is that the more people uh, believe in something negative, uh, the more it infects other people who don't believe it yet. And sometimes it's encoded into phrases that are very, very negative. Richard Brody, in his book called The Virus of the Mind, comes up with a new science called memetics. It's the science of memes. Now, memes are viral thoughts that can be passed on from person to person and they sound really cool, right? So that we find ourselves saying things that are negative that maybe are repeated in the media, on TV or on the internet. So, my wife and I, when we find ourselves repeating a viral thought, like, uh, I'm going nuts! <laughs> okay? We shout, mean, and visualize it dissolving, right? The phrase dissolving, and uh, letting it go. For us, that's how we handle the science of memetics or viral thoughts. And then, of course, you can always replace that with the positive thought. I'm stable, I'm okay, I'm all right. <laughs> And this is truly amazing that there's now scientific evidence that if you're in a state of joy or even visualizing a shield of light around you, it could be something like white light, right? This meditation is done very often by people. Uh, even Oprah does that. Uh, meditation on the white light to maintain her sanity and, and interacting with all of these people, right? Uh, and it's been shown scientifically in a book called The Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart. Oh, it has hundreds of uh, great evidentiary uh, work that is explored. And some of it actually is positive about the conscious shielding. So you can visualize a shield around you, right? Whatever type works for you, a tube of light, white light, even an, an old shield like in the old days of King Arthur. <laughs> if you're really up against something difficult, I found that one works pretty well. 
All right. Uh, so how do we stay in a state of joy where we're automatically shielded without having to even visualize? That is the big question, which I explore in great depth in my book, The Quantum Shield, protecting your life from destructive thoughts and feelings. Because life is so challenging, how can we meet these challenges and yet maintain our focus on our dream? Another analogy to what's going on is magnetism. Think of a lot of little magnets on a table, okay? Uh, and just set them up randomly okay? in their direction, north and south. But if you bring a very powerful magnet on either side of the table, it's going to line most of them up. And that's the idea of quantum entanglement. It actually can line them up in the wrong direction, or positive quantum entanglement can line them up in the right direction. And that direction uh, is indicative of the positive possibilities in our lives. So the question becomes, how can we prevent negative quantum entanglement from ruining our lives? To prevent the collapse. How can we prevent the collapse of our positive intentions? So quantum theory is defined by waves of probability. And there are waves of probability that represent your positive path in life, sort of like the waves that are being created in this spa. But there are interfering waves that might occur, which might change that if the spa were not surrounded by a quantum shield. Get the idea? The shielding effect of joy right, in our lives, actually can prevent these quantum waves, we call the wave functions, of outside influences or the wrong inside influences from entangling with or interfering with the waves inside this quantum shield. So this positive flow of waves, right, can maintain its status.